Hello, and welcome to the rearing of entomopathogenic nematodes, presented by the Michigan State University Organic Pest Management Laboratory. Entomopathogenic nematodes are semi-microscopic, unsegmented roundworms that have a parasitic relationship with an insect host. They infect their host as an infective juvenile, or IJ, through natural openings within the host. The nematode then releases a mutualistic bacterium which kills the host within one to four days. Together, the bacterium and nematode liquefy and feed on the host. The nematodes reproduce one to three generations within the host cadaver before emerging as infective juveniles in search for a new host. The effect of entomopathogenic nematodes on non-target species is negligible, making them an effective biological control. This video was taken using a microscope under 60 times magnification. As you can clearly see, the nematode appears like a worm and is unsegmented. The nematode is also in its infective juvenile stage. This video will demonstrate the on-site rearing techniques for entomopathogenic nematodes to benefit farmers for controlling soil insects. Possible reasons a farmer may choose to rear his or her own nematodes is that purchasing nematodes directly from suppliers is expensive, it is hard to obtain a certified organic supply, and there is the possibility to obtain nematodes directly from the wild and rear them yourself. In this video, scientific laboratory equipment is used simply because of its availability to our lab. The possibility of using alternative equipment that may be found around the house or purchased at local stores is certainly possible and recommended to farmers. The equipment required for this process includes a 10 times magnifying optical microscope or magnifying glass, a 0 to 200 microliter micropipette, 160 millimeter petri dishes, 60 millimeter filter papers, 250 to 500 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks, 1 liter tissue flasks, wax worms, as well as deionized water. The rearing process of entomopathogenic nematodes involves four major steps. The first step includes an assessment and population density count of existing nematode colonies, which is done to determine the number of nematodes per microliter of solution. The second step involves the infection of a host with a specific species of entomopathogenic nematodes. This is completed by applying a predetermined amount of nematodes in a petri dish that has wax worm hosts inside. One week after the infection, the third step, the white trap or extraction takes place. During this step, the small petri dish with infected hosts is placed in a larger petri dish with water covering the bottom. This purpose is to attract the nematodes when they emerge from the infected cadaver into the pool of water. After three weeks in the white trap, the larger petri dish that will now be full of water and nematodes is poured into a tish tissue flask and diluted with additional water. The nematodes are then stored in this flask for a few weeks before the process can begin again. In our lab, we rear four different nematode species. They include Steiner nematidae, Carpocapsi, Rio Brave, Feltier, as well as Heterohabitidae bacteriophora, or HBAC. When choosing which species to utilize, note that Carpocapsi is an ambush predator and predates near the soil surface, while HBAC is a forager. Rio Brave and Feltier are somewhere in between. Matching the biology and ecology of both nematode and the target pest is required for a successful management. The population density assessment of the existing nematode population is conducted by taking a specific volume of your nematode colony from the tissue flask using the micropipette and placing it on a small 60 millimeter petri dish that has had a grid scratched onto the bottom of it. The specific sample volume taken can vary from 50 to 150 microliters. The goal is to achieve a sample containing approximately 50 to 200 nematodes. Therefore, taking a larger sample with a less concentrated colony and a smaller sample with a more concentrated colony. The petri dish 
is then filled with deionized water until it covers the bottom fully. Using the microscope or magnifying lens, count the number of nematodes in the petri dish. It helps to use a clicker counter so you don't have to keep track of counting. You should repeat this step three times to achieve a re reliable population count. To obtain the average number of nematodes per microliter, average the three population counts and then divide by the number of microliters used in the sample volume. In this video clip, you see me taking a 75 microliter sample of the nematode colony using the micro pipette and placing it on the 60 millimeter petri dish that has a grid pattern engraved on the bottom. You will also see me then filling the petri dish with deionized water until the entire bottom of the petri dish is covered. This video was taken using a microscope under 10 times magnification. As you can see, most of the nematodes are moving and that is what you want to look for when counting. The still ones that are not moving can be assumed dead and not counted under the population density assessment. Immediately following the population density count, you can infect hosts. We use waxworms as hosts for entomopathogenic nematodes. This is because they can be sourced locally at bait shops and are reliable. To prepare for infecting hosts, place a filter paper in the 60 millimeter petri dish and count out your desired number of hosts for each petri dish and place them within. You should infect at a rate of 20 nematodes per host. To determine the total volume of nematodes to infect with, divide the total number of nematodes required per petri dish by the number of nematodes per microliter which was previously determined. The answer will be the number of microliters required for in infection in each petri dish. Using the micro pipette, Place the correct volume of nematodes in each petri dish and add approximately a half milliliter of deionized water per infection arena. Then put the cover on the petri dish and make sure to label with the nematode species and the infection date. You should store the nematodes in a dark, warm or room temperature location for one week. In our lab, we simply cover the petri dishes with a cardboard box. The number of infected petri dishes or infection arenas used is determined on whether you want to simply maintain population levels or increase population levels. We maintain populations by creating and infecting three infection arenas per week and placing five hosts in each arena. If you wanted to increase populations in preparation for application of the nematodes, you could either increase the number of hosts per infection arena increase the number of infection arenas created, or both. It should also be noted that you can expect 25 to 100,000 infective juveniles from each infected host. We label each petri dish making sure to note which nematode species it is and the date of the infection. After labeling each petri dish, we put a 60 millimeter filter paper in the bottom of each dish. We then put five hosts or wax worms in each petri dish. To determine the infection rate, we take the number of nematodes per microliter which was previously determined in the population density count and divide it by one. And then we multiply it by the number of nematodes desired. We infect at a rate of 20 nematodes per host. Therefore, with a petri dish with five hosts, you multiply by 100 getting the total number of microliters necessary per petri dish. Infecting the nematodes is simple. Using the micro pipette, place the appropriate volume of nematodes in the center of each petri dish. Then make sure to place a few drops of deionized water in each petri dish, making it possible for the nematodes to move and remain moist. After one week of the infection process, you must begin the white trap, or the extraction of the nematodes out of the infected host cadaver. Before you begin the white trap, 
you must assess your infected hosts. You should remove any of the wax worms if any of the hosts are alive still, or any fungus develops and they look diseased or not the proper color. Infected Carpocapsici in Rio Brave should be a beige color. Infected Feltier should be a tan or walnut brown color. And the Bacteria Fora should be a dark brick red. After removing any hosts, place the small 60 millimeter petri dish inside of a larger 100 millimeter petri dish. Fill the outer edge of the 100 millimeter petri dish with deionized water until the bottom is fully covered. Also place a small amount of water, like a few drops, in the 60 millimeter petri dish with the hosts in order to maintain moisture. Make sure to remove the lid of the smaller 60 millimeter petri dish and then place the cover on the larger 100 millimeter petri dish. Make sure to transfer the label onto the larger petri dish and mark the date. You should keep the petri dishes in a dark area at warm room temperature for an additional three to four weeks. You can use the same place that you used for the infection. In this video, you will see me demonstrating how we set up a white trap. To do it, we simply move the label off the old 60 millimeter petri dish and place it on the new 100 millimeter petri dish, making sure to mark the date. We then fill the bottom part of the 100 millimeter petri dish with water until the bottom is fully covered. We then place the old 60 millimeter petri dish in the floating pool of water and make sure to add a few drops of water to the 60 millimeter petri dish to maintain moisture. We then cover and store in a warm or room temperature in dark location. In our lab, we put it under a cardboard box as well. After three to four weeks in the white trap, it becomes time to harvest the nematodes. This is done simply by removing and discarding the small 60 millimeter petri dish with the infected hosts and pouring the liquid or nematode slurry carefully into a tissue flask. Depending on the population density and effectiveness of the infection, you may need to split a petri dish into more than one tissue flask or pour multiple petri dishes into a tissue flask. The tissue flask should be filled up to the max fill line and you should be able to clearly see the nematodes, but the tissue flask should not appear cloudy. This picture was taken three weeks after the white trap was set, right before harvesting. As you can see, there's, you can clearly see the nematodes in the outside petri dish. You will see in this video clip me demonstrating the harvesting process. It is really simple and all you do is carefully remove those small 60 millimeter petri dish with the infected cadavers of the host and dispose of it and then carefully pour the nematode slurry into a tissue flask and then fill the tissue flask up to the max fill line clearly shown on the tissue flask. Tissue flasks should be stored in a dark, room temperature location for at least three weeks and up to two months before being used to reinfect a host or applied. In our lab, we store the tissue flasks in a cabinet. For a longer period of storage, it is recommended to store the nematodes under cooler temperatures such as in a refrigerator, as well as in an aerated environment. This can be easily accomplished by using an aquarium air pump and an air stone. A stainless steel air stone is recommended as they have smaller pore size, increasing the rate at which the oxygen will dissolve into the water. Steiner Nema species of nematodes can be stored for 6 to 12 months, while Heterohabdiididae can only be stored for 3 to 6 months. The nematodes are most effectively applied directly to the soil using a backpack or PTO sprayer with the filters removed. Site-specific application is necessary 
as the dispersal rate of the nematodes once applied is severely limited to about 90 centimeters within 30 days. It is best to apply nematodes in the early morning or evening as they are very sensitive to UV light and temperatures outside the range of 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Maintaining soil moisture after application is critical in increasing the survival rate of the nematodes. Also, soil pH has not shown to have a strong effect on the nematodes. Possible sources for nematodes include Becker Underwood, Copert Biological Systems, as well as many others that can be found online. Please note that finding a certified organic source of nematodes may be difficult and expensive. Sources for laboratory equipment may include VWR International, Fisher's Scientific, as well as many others that can be found online. Once again, the possibility of using home equipment that may be sourced from your home or local store is certainly possible. For further information and questions, you may refer to our website at www.opm.msu.edu. This video was edited, directed, and narrated by John Dindia. Special thanks would like to be given to Joe Riddle, Morgan Burnett, and Matt Grishop for their assistance and in-depth knowledge of nematode rearing. This video was produced by the Michigan State University Organic Pest Management Laboratory.